Welcome to the People's Republic of Wisconsin. That's what the rest of the state calls this place. I didn't make that up. Wish I did. Madison's been called a lot of other things, too. Republicans in this state say Milwaukee and Madison are the turds in the punch bowl. <laughs> God. 77 square miles surrounded by reality, they say. The Berkeley or the Midwest, people insist. Now, this isn't going to be a bad video, but you people like bad stuff, so I had to get your attention. Madison, Wisconsin's actually a wonderful place. It's just different now. It's changed. I'm going to talk about that a lot. And I'm going to show you a lot of homeless stuff. You love that. And I'm going to complain about politics because you love that. If I didn't do those things, you wouldn't watch this video. I know you. It was the end of the third week on this road trip. For the first time, I wasn't along a great lake. That's just a regular lake. We came to the capital of Wisconsin and we took a couple days to see everything we could. I wasn't sure what to expect. Forever now, I'd heard about how marvelous this city is. But I talked to people who live here and they say, this place has gone to shit. Sounds like a job for me. Madison, Wisconsin, the friendliest place in America. Apparently, that's what the internet says. According to a report based on supposedly relevant metrics, there's no other place that's more friendly than here. They said Madison people donate to charity a lot, they volunteer, and people here are just nice to one another. Study said that everybody in Madison cares for each other, and they try hard to make the place better. And my favorite part, 60% of Madison voted for their last mayor. Now that part, that's where the problem starts. Because if a majority of the people voted to make Madison the way it is today, then the people who live here have nothing to complain about, do they? Now, I don't know how you vote, but I'm going to guess it would take a lot to make you change the party you vote for. Well, I talked to two people who are from Madison, born and raised. They both told me, we used to be very liberal, but after seeing Madison change the way it is, they're Republicans now. What? They talk to old school Madison people and they'll be like, this place used to be so funky and it felt like a community. But now there's these tall buildings everywhere and Target on Main Street and a dollar store downtown. What? Where's all the mom and pops? Well, a lot of the mom and pops left during the riots of 2020. But it's become your typical snobby liberal place, even more so. Taxes are going up. Traffic's getting worse. Crime's going up. And the solution? Just keep throwing money at the problems. But that's just making it worse. Now this is State Street. It's the main drive through the heart of downtown Madison. It goes from the capital all the way to campus. Most of it's just bars and cheap Chinese crap. If it wasn't for the bums on every block, it'd be a pretty nice place to be. The thing that most people complain about these days are all the homeless people and the crime. 
it's a super duper liberal place. So you have to watch what you say. But I think everyone here is frustrated by all this. It's worse than I thought it would be. Sort of like a mini Austin with all the beggars and smelly druggies laying all over the place. The whole downtown smells like weed. And it was here in Madison where I got my first whiff of piss on this trip. Poor college kids that probably voted for all this. They have to feel so uncomfortable around a lifestyle that they enabled. I wouldn't want to go to college here if I had to walk past this every day. Austin was worse, but it has a Berkeley vibe here, just without the tents on the sidewalks. Yuck! And P.U. This is all fake news. It's all fake money. Ever heard of Agenda 21 or Agenda 30? Well, which agenda is it, Mappy? They're letting everyone in here and putting everyone on the streets. Who is they? The UN, the Rockefellers, the Bilderbergs, the Gates Foundation, China. They. Mappy, it sounds like you've been reading those conspiracy theory blogs again. Why don't you go back to reading the celebrity gossip? Pipe down and take it. Take your medicine. Cash your check and shut up. But what about all the companies that want us to get sick so they can population control and own everything? There's about 300,000 people in Madison today, and it's growing, but maybe not the way they want. I hear that a lot of the remote workers that have moved to town have changed the culture. And all the new Chicago people, my God. Well, I mentioned the crime. It's getting bad here now. There's a bunch of people moving up here from Chicago for the Bennies, and they're bringing their crime and their drama with them. And folks here seethe at all the new people coming to town and ruining their wonderful city. How dare they? Well, they dare because your state has loose welfare laws that bring in the poor inner city people. Wisconsin's welfare spending is 22% higher than their neighbors in the South. This New York Times article confirms that Chicago's poor are fleeing to Wisconsin for safer streets and greater welfare benefits. People figured it out a long time ago. They get WIC and SNAP from Illinois and then welfare from Wisconsin at the same time. Sounds like they're smarter than the system. Sounds like they're smarter than us. There's a loop in the hole and it ain't getting patched. Where I'm going now is supposedly they have trouble with all the low income folks in the apartments. And we are way on the edge of town, like at the end of town where the cornfields start. And I'm wondering did they put these people out here on purpose? Because this is about 20 minutes from downtown. So here's an example. So they put in all this low income housing for all the people that were moving up from Chicago. And then guess what? They trashed the place. It got so dangerous here, the city called them a public nuisance. No shit. Gave them a place to stay for cheap, and they ruined it. It was so bad, the city was like, you know what, we need to rethink this. We're kind of tired about the calls and complaints about this place. And then down the street at these apartments, two teenagers have been killed. So far, the city's trying to figure out how to handle all the drama over here, too. They're even talking about closing down some of these low-income complexes. Closing them down forever because there's shootings and fights and drugs can't have that not here this is all pretty new for Madison we're getting used to what it's like out in the real world now welcome to Chicago more shit smeared around the house I just think it's funny that Madison was like come here and we'll take you in 
We're all welcoming. Wait, what? You act like how? Well, we're a place of equality, but we don't have the resources to deal with you. We're going to declare you a chronic public nuisance. There. A friend of mine who lives here said 20 years ago, Madison was an A, maybe even an A-plus place to live. Now he says it's C-minus, trending towards D-plus. Uh-oh, that's not good. That's close to failing. It's always been liberal here. I mean, one time, a mayor of Madison gave the key to the city to Fidel Castro. But even the libs here today are like, Scott Walker was a terrible Republican governor. But after he left, things really got out of hand. Kind of wish we had Scott Walker back now. This place is way too far left now. Is Madison turning into California? It looks like the capital, Wisconsin's got the Blue City Blues. Okay, right now I'm on Allied Drive, where several people told me is the hood. LOL. Madison's hood. There really isn't any ghetto here or anything close to that. I think the sheltered liberals here might think parts of town are bad, but their perspective's off. This is Meadow Hood. <laughs> That's what the people here call this neighborhood. It's actually called Meadow Wood. It's just the working class side of town where the people who work in the factories live. And this is where the people who don't work live. Somebody told me, Madison's never going to get a true bad neighborhood, Nick. Whenever something starts to get out of hand, they take care of it. Yeah? Well, what about the bums downtown? That's the worst I could find. It's pretty hilarious that this is what Madison thinks is their ghetto. You have, People have absolutely no idea what a real ghetto is. This is nothing. It's just some folks trying to make it, make it by in life is all. I haven't seen any sign of really anything tragic out here. People are spoiled. You live in a bubble. That's what I have to say. I mean, look at this. That's your hood. Maybe the upper middle class in Baltimore. So that's pretty much it on the hood tour of Madison. Sorry to disappoint you, you sickos want to see run down and boarded up and people walking around all sketchy like. Well, not today. Not in Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -mm. Okay, the complaining part is over. Kinda. Madison's actually a super neat place to live. There's a lot of growth, a lot of good jobs in tech and healthcare. This has been called the best place to raise a family many times. It's very pleasant here once you get away from bum land. A typical upper middle class part of town. The professional class. Professors, retired hippies, those sort of people. A lot of people come here, they go to college, and they never leave. But that's happening less, because all the homes are too expensive for young people. Something like this will be about 600 grand, and it's going up fast. And the taxes, they'll really get you here. They're higher here in Madison than anywhere else in the state. And Wisconsin's already a high-tax state. A lot of Wisconsin people say, Madison's not Wisconsin. And then 
Madison people will be like, well, Dane County's the economic driver for the whole state. All the job growth and money and momentum is right here. Without Madison, Wisconsin's Ohio. And yuck, no one wants that. And by the way, if you want to move here, email me. I know real estate agents in Madison, and I can help you find somebody awesome. You might like it. Just stay away from the bumps. So I've been here for 13 years or so. Uh, Madison's definitely grown in population quite a bit. A lot of people say that uh, Madison is uh, going through the process of becoming a bigger city with, uh, you know, as we talked about the homeless, uh, you know, some crime issues uh, coming up. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, schools are pretty packed, so taxes go up for that to, you know, pay for that and everything. Um, otherwise, you know, Madison's still you know, a small, big town is what you know, people often call it. Um, we are in Wisconsin, so a lot of people stick around the area where they were born. So it seems like uh, if you're local to here, grew up here, you know a lot of people when you go out to the store. Uh, a lot like many smaller towns around the, the state anyway. That's the famous State Street Bras. It's a big deal in town. University of Wisconsin kids love this place. They love it. Look at them. We came here on the first night we were in town to watch the men's basketball game. Everybody's like, they love Wisconsin basketball in Madison. You gotta go out and watch the game at the State Street Bras. Eh, I don't think most of the people really pay too much attention to the game. Wisconsin got their butts kicked by Indiana anyway. Whatever. Most of the culture and things to do here revolve around campus, which kind of spills into the downtown area. So that's where we spent most of our time, kind of checking the place out on this whole peninsula right here. I was a little disappointed, though. The only real whoop it upping that was going on was at that brat house. Nowhere else. So I got a brat. I mean, this is the Broad House. A 96 ounce Mega Mule? What the what the? I'd been on a long bender this trip, and I know this isn't the place to take a break. <laughs> I really wanted to try it, just to show you what it looks like. But I didn't. That stadium is a big deal. If there's something people here love more than the Packers, beer, cheese, hunting, and hating Illinois, it's Wisconsin football. They love it. Whenever Wisconsin's having a good sports year, the whole state is much happier, especially in football. I think Wisconsin sports are the only reason that upstaters don't hate Madison even more. I'm in downtown Madison on the last day in February. And it was hot that day, mister. 73 degrees. It was an all-time record high the day I was here. Not for February 29th. For the whole month. Just my luck, right? I'll tell you what. People here sure are happy about this. Look at the place. All the college kids laying out like we were in South Florida on spring break. That lake's usually frozen this time of year. Look at campus. Everyone's all summered out. And look, they didn't even have to wear gloves so they could swipe their phones easier. When I was in college, we talked to people. I don't think these kids have those social skills anymore. Dudes don't date. Women are like, where's all the men? Well, I'll tell you where they are. They're staring at naked chicks online and playing video games at home. Maybe you'd have a social life if you got out of the house more and had an actual conversation. And maybe they'd pay you more at work if you weren't such a sissy. The second day was damn cold, which I found really interesting. It's cold. 
I'm inside my car and I can see my breath in here. It is freezing out here. Yesterday, these poor guys, it was 71 and today, rude awakening. This is how it should be up here. Everybody was dressed differently today. Gone were the skimpy tanks and flops. I mean, it is brutally cold out here. Look at that lake now. What a difference one night can make. It dropped 66 degrees overnight. And that damn thing just about froze over in 12 hours. I'm out here along one of the lakes in Madison. <laughs> it is freaking freezing. It's 20 degrees and the wind is blowing 25 miles an hour and it feels like it's zero. Out here you can see lakes literally freezing out there. That wasn't frozen yesterday when I got here. Brutally cold. 65 degrees colder today than it was yesterday. Yesterday everybody was walking around in little teeny shorts and little shirts. And today, they're not. I tell you what. Super beautiful though out here. I was supposed to catch some ice racing out there on the lake, but it's not frozen, but it's almost frozen. This is why I came up here to experience this cold. And to be honest, I'm pretty glad that it wasn't like this every day, because this is not fun. Not at all. This is Williamson Street. It's another popular hip area in town. Everybody says, Keep Willie weird. This whole part of town was affordable 50 years ago. Not anymore. People are being priced out of here as well. Happening all over the country. The middle class is going to be down to nothing. One day, we'll all be poor migrants and corporate oligarchs. Well, that's what Mappy says anyway. And look, more crime stuff. I think that pawn shop got sacked. Poor people probably did that. And then you have all these buildings and landmarks that are being replaced by condos and retail. All the new and modern replacing the old. I don't think the college kids here give a shit. The natives do though. probably didn't know I'm a frat boy, but I am. I dropped by the teak house to see what they were up to. I was a teak in college. Came to do see my bros. University of Wisconsin. Let's see if they're inside. Anyways, I'm like, I'm gonna drop by and see my bros from another hoe. Like, hey you guys, I'm an old school teak. Let's hang out. But even the teaks are soft now. What's up, dude? Hey, I'm a teak from uh, California. I just wanted to see if I could say what's up to somebody. And is uh, anybody home? Uh, not really. I'm like the only one here right now, actually. And guys are in their rooms, but okay, that's really it. Well, I was just gonna try to just do like a quick little like interview with anybody. You think there's any? Is there like anybody that I could talk to for a few? No. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm personally not interested. Um, okay, but there's really no one else here right now. It's pretty quiet. I mean, you saw me in the front yeah. room. That was about it. Okay. Yeah. All Sorry right. About that. 
All right. Well, thanks for the not warm welcome. Sorry. Have a good rest of your day. Lame. Lame. One dude actually answered the door. He didn't even want to talk to an elder bro. Didn't want to have a drink or anything. Back in the day, us teeks raged all day long. And we chased tail. Now all they do is stare at their phones. Does anyone know how to have a conversation anymore? So we just kind of bounced around a little bit. I wanted to see what the drinking scene was like in the drunkest place outside of Russia. A friend of mine, Mike, gave me a long list of places to stop at so I could get a feel for the local drinking scene, get a feel for the culture, see what Madison's like. But, but I didn't have it in me, to be honest. After three weeks in Michigan and the Wisconsin coast, I was pretty tired. I love it. Here's how lame I am. On the second night, I just got a nice bowl of ramen and watched all the cold college kids walk by. Felt like an old man. At this point, I was fine with that break. My body needed it. And the rest of the trip was a lot of bad stuff. You can find anything to complain about if you really want to. Madison's like anywhere else in the country in that regard. It's a neat place. It's getting worse though. Some people say it's turning into what you see on the West Coast. Well, that sucks. I can't stand that place. Some historians will tell you that the Republican Party started right here in Wisconsin in 1854. But the tide's turning here now. Seems to be going back to its democratic ways. For years, Wisconsin's been welcoming to all. But over time, that welcome mat, it's become a little worn out. Every state I've been to, when you start to see this, once it comes, it just gets worse. Madison hasn't been able to figure this out. Hardly anyone has. When you solve the problem, the problem gets worse. Plug the leak in the dam, and you create a new problem. The dam's going to overflow, and you got to build a bigger dam. How many dams can this country build before we're all damned out? Damn it. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. And by the way, if you want to learn about where you should live, you should go to my website, homesnacks.com slash findyourplace. On my website, you get tips on where you should move and what the costs are and a whole lot more. It's like an AI Nick Johnson consultation for free. And if you want to buy some Mappy gear, click the store link on my homepage. From there, you can check out the latest merch. There's hoodies, coffee cups, stickers, and shirts. Show off how much you love Mappy and support the channel. And I'm on Cameo too. If you want me to send you or somebody you know a personalized video message, go to Cameo and search Nick Johnson YouTube. It's fun. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. Hey YouTube world, I'm Sage, Nick's manager. You've enjoyed a Corner House Entertainment production, so watch another one.